Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, to our continuing study in the Church Dogmatics by Karl Barth. We've been looking at Volume 4, The Doctrine of Reconciliation. We just concluded paragraph 67 on the upbuilding of the church, and now Professor Barth will transition from canon law to the doctrine of Christian love. In other words, we're going to transition from law to love, agape love. And we don't normally run into a doctrine of Christian love, so it's interesting that Bart took this up. But it is, uh, of course, as reflected off the uh, previous teaching of the exaltation of the Son of Man to the right hand of the Father. And so it is uh, always measured against Christology, which is the foundational hermeneutical principle for all of Bart's work. But it is... Uh, a new subject matter, we get into this doctrine of Christian love, and with every introduction of a new subject matter, Karl Barth first begins with structure, and then he gets into the deeper content. But he always, as his first lesson with any topic, he begins with structure, so we're going to actually look at the structure within a doctrine of Christian love. So it will be a unique presentation because we don't normally see this kind of a topic taken up in its, as its own category. But uh, Professor Bart uh, gives us a very uh, detailed look at structure with the doctrine of Christian love. Let's begin in block one. We'll take a look at the concept of the love of self-giving. Man encounters Christ in his royal office as Lord and his exaltation in the living reception of faith, where we find ourselves endowed with spiritual gifts for the ministry of service, and that will include our decision for the direction of movement as present in the Lordship of Christ and the Gospel. This endowment and this direction coordinate with us coordinate us with Christ as members of the Soma body. So we take up the uh, endowment of spiritual gifts coupled with the direction that we see in the Christ event and by taking up that uh, gift of the Spirit and the direction we coordinate ourselves, our lives with Christ and with his direction of the salvation of the all humanity and sanctification of all humanity and by taking up that uh, coordinated stance we join as members of the Soma body and Christ is the Kephali head of the church. So we enter into personal relationship of being a member of the body under the guidance of the direction of the Kephali head of Jesus Christ exalted as Son of Man and so our act of surrender and correspondence um, is an act of the love of self-giving, or what Bart says is agape love. He uh, quotes Galatians 5.6, which tells us that faith and love are inseparable. Faith always works through love. They are two sides of a singular inseparable event. Faith and love are inseparable. So we really are looking at the, the love of self-giving, and that becomes a fulfillment of the law, says Bart. So if you look at note three, we're going to take a look at the, the definite action, because Bart always proposes that uh, our doctrine needs to be concrete. He says there's a definite action here of the turn. Christian agape love is where one turns to the other, and for the sake of the other. It's a uh, love act which is very alien to the secular world. And so we are uh, that individual who is coming out of the baptism of signification. Remember our last lesson that uh, we come out of that baptism of signification, which uh, abbreviates confession, consolation, and signification. When we come out of that baptism of signification, 
to participate in the incarnate work of ministering in the kingdom through our act of agape love. So the baptism of signification leads to the ministry of agape love toward the other, for the sake of the other. So next we're going to take a look at this uh, incarnate work, this ministry which uh, um, unfolds after we uh, become a member of the Soma body. And in block two we're going to look at the incarnate act of our twofold freedom. And the twofold freedom is very simply the knowledge that we are created from God and then the knowledge through Jesus Christ that we are elected unto God, that we are God's elect through Christ. So the twofold freedom in knowing that our, our origin, original created human nature is a human nature from God and that our uh, fallen state is redeemed in an atonement of being elected unto God through Jesus Christ. It's a twofold freedom. It's twofold freedom in creation and in atonement. Now here Bart wants to start breaking down the concepts for love. If you look at note one, eros, love of possession, and agape, love of self-giving, are both historical determinations and are to be considered within this historical context. Now that's an important statement. We have to begin with this foundational statement with Bart because Bart does not state that love is a attribute of human nature. It's a historical consequence of human nature, but it is not the core human nature. The core human nature is that uh, likeness unto God that we have been gifted with in creation, but that nature, that human nature is not where we look at the doctrine of Christian love. The doctrine of Christian love must address historical determination, says Bart. That's a very foundational statement there. you got to remember, this is his starting point, that uh, eros love of possession and agape love of self-giving are historical determinations. That's where we consider this doctrine. They are obviously antithetical determinations. Now note too, as historical determinations, eros and agape are to be evaluated dialectically and their influence on the practical form our human nature can take. So again, he says, this attribute of either eros or agape is that which qualifies that practical shaping of the way that we're going to minister toward others. It's going to shape our practical phronesis. In Greek, that's the concept of phronesis. It's, it's going to shape that phronesis stance and the way that we approach others in our community and if we take up that concept of fellow humanity. So a note too, as historical determinations are to be considered dialectically in their practical form that uh, human nature can take. And Bart gives us uh, two axioms that are very important here. The first axiom is of the love act. In the act of love, man enters the realm of something new and out of the ordinary, which will necessarily result in relating to his core of human nature. So that's an axiom of human nature that Bart wants to emphasize that uh, any act of love is, in a sense, a transcendence out of the ordinary. It will result in return in an internalization that which, which will affect the core human nature. Now the second axiom is a, a Christian axiom from Bart. It's the axiom of the vertical standpoint. It belongs to man's very nature to be with God as his Lord and to participate in all circumstances as God's elect. I'll read that again. That's a critical Christian axiom for Bart. It belongs to man's very nature to be with God as his Lord and to participate in each and every circumstance as God's elect. Therefore, man's act of love will always involve and should anticipate a return of significant internalization. 
there will always be a return that we will internalize which will affect that core nature. Bart says that Eros love of possession creates a return of self-contradiction and opposition to that creation, that good creation that we have been given by God in creation. Agape love, however, of self-giving creates a return of correspondence and affinity with that core nature. Therefore, within this act, this new act of love, the human nature is not altered, says Bart, but it is affected. It is affected with regard to practical form. So, we don't alt the nature doesn't become altered, but it most certainly does get shaped in a practical form. And that shaping of practical form is the starting point for ministry. So, it's incredibly important for Christian ministry to understand phronesis or practical wisdom or that stance where we begin with our mission. I've got a little diagram here. It looks complicated, but it's really a fairly simple diagram. I'm just going to walk you through it, and then you'll see that it's really very basic, but it, it does get the point across. We have a created, a divinely created core of nature, of our human nature, and it does contain a motiva motivational base of how we will act in the world toward others. It does include a motivational base. And this is more at the unconscious level. It's, uh, it's motivational. It's e emotional. It's uh, that area that we're supposed to imprint with the tupas imprint of Jesus Christ. That, that's in uh, various scriptures throughout the New Testament. We are to tupas imprint our motivational base with Christ. But we go out of this initial nature with an act of eros love of possession and if you follow that follow that arrow you'll see that it turns back towards the self and self contradiction we end up contradict contradicting ourselves we get a return of contradiction and uh, that becomes a, an, an actual negation or an opposition opposition to our true self However, if you look at the uh, the arrow for the act of agape love, of self-giving, that big goes out in the world and then returns as correspondence. We actually get a reinforcing correspondence of that God-intended human nature. And then if you look at the uh, central arrow coming out of the core motivational base, you'll see that... Uh, that leads to a resultant phronesis, a resultant practical stance for all of our missions. So if we take up that eros, love of possession action, it's going to give us a, a contradictory and negative phronesis stance toward mission. If we act in the agape love of self-giving, we correspond with that God-given human nature, and we have a practical phronesis stance, which is very much in tune with what God desires for mission. From here we want to look at block three. We want to take a look at uh, the resultant horizontal, horizontal standpoint, which evolves out of this vertical standpoint and the practical phronesis that results. Now in block three... The horizontal standing as serviceable environment or environment with transcendence. Bart says, in Christ we are directed toward the I-Thou encounter. That means we affirm the concept of fellow humanity, and uh, which gives of the self without any anticipation of return or benefit. We don't act out of expecting something back. And so we can take a look at the difference between I, it, and I, thou, agape action equals the orienting of the human nature on God and a movement of transcendence which affir affirms fully the concept of fellow humanity. Eros, love of possession, and eros action is an orienting of human nature on self-love 
That reduces transcendence to seeking only that which serves the self. There is the role of the quickening power of the Holy Spirit that takes place, and it will uh, it lifts agape action into becoming triumphant action, which corresponds to the kingdom of God. It also will sustain the agape action as imperishable. It will have eternal sustainment. And the Holy Spirit will continually call man out of the kingdom of Eros and into the kingdom of God or the kingdom of agape. So when you reflect this off Christology, Bart concludes in this final statement by telling us that our atonement, our reconciliation, when looked at against the concept of love, means that we're continually being called by the word of Christ through the Holy Spirit to turn away from the kingdom of the Eros possession, which is the world of Sark's flesh, and turn toward the kingdom of God, which is going to be a kingdom founded on the agape love of self-giving. So that's our concluding axiom, our concluding truth. And Bart wants to conclude by taking up the doctrine of reconciliation in this conclusive statement with regard to the concept of love. We're called out of one kingdom and into another, and this is continual. We are always addressed in our historical situations with uh, the Holy Spirit seeking to get us to negate the flesh or the Sark's view of possession, of Eros possession, to leave that that idea and that concept completely and to take up the Christian concept of agape self-giving and then you truly see other individuals as those who are part of your fellow humanity under the lordship of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is ascended to the right hand of the Father as Son of Man. He is Lord over all humanity, not just Christians. The exalted Son of Man is Lord over all of heaven, all of earth, all of humanity. We participate in that fellow humanity through the self-giving action of agape love and negating that previous stance of living according to the flesh, according to Sark's, and being immersed in a kingdom of Eros possession. We give that the kingdom of Eros possession. We want to live in the kingdom of agape self-giving. And we want to seek out those who we want to show them the benefit of confessing Jesus Christ as ascended Son of Man, as the source of reconciliation, as a source of liberation, as a source of salvation, and a source of completed objective historical atonement. We want all the world, all of humanity, to gain the tremendous grace and benefit of this confession of faith. So our action needs to take up that little diagram in a block two and to negate that first arrow of the act of eros, love of possession, and to affirm that second arrow of the act of agape, love of self-giving. Then we will receive correspondence after correspondence after correspondence and it will reinforce our motivational base and what will that do well it will more deeply imprint the two paths imprint of Jesus Christ into our motivational base continual action in agape will continually reinforce correspondence and that reinforced correspondence increases the pressure of imprint on our motivational base of imprinting the person of Jesus Christ and his reality and truth into our motivational base. It's the image of the imprinting of a face on a coin. That's tupas in the Greek, tupas imprint. Through the agape action of love, we reach correspondence, correspondence after correspondence, and tupas imprinting becomes deeper and deeper and more significantly deepened in our motivational base. And then our resultant phronesis is always going to be a stance of the way.
the truth, and the life. It will be a phronesis of being directed by the way of Christ. Again, we are very blessed by this lesson from Professor Bart. And we have the structure now of the doctrine of Christian love. Next, we'll be moving into the content. We'll pick up with uh, 142 next time.